Welcome to the third lesson of the series. This lesson covers the topic managing the API Gateway. The API Gateway is a runtime backend component, an API proxy, developed using WSO2 ESB. The API Gateway secures, protects, manages, and scales API calls. It intercepts API requests, applies policies such as throttling and security using handlers, and manages API statistics. Upon validation of a policy, the gateway passes web service calls to the actual backend. If the service call is a token request, the gateway passes it directly to the key manager. When the API manager is running, you can access the gateway using the management console URL. You can analyze and view statistics related to API invocations in the API manager using the WSO2 data analytics server or Google Analytics. Though the API Manager Gateway includes the WSO2 ESB, it is not recommended to use the Gateway for ESB-specific tasks, but to only use it for Gateway functionality related to API invocations. For example, if you want to call external services like SAP, use a separate ESB cluster for that. When a request comes to the API Gateway, it first extracts the access token and validates it against the key management server, and then applies the quality of service policy. Next, custom extensions that are defined are applied. If Data Analytics Server is configured, statistics will be published. The API Invoker is the user role that uses the API Gateway. When an API call hits the API Gateway, the Gateway carries out security checks to verify if the token is valid. During these verifications, the API Gateway extracts parameters such as the access token, API name, and API version that are passed onto it. Since the entire load of traffic to APIs goes through the API Gateway, this verification process needs to be fast and efficient in order to prevent overhead and delays. The API Manager uses caching for this purpose, where the validation information is cached with the access token, API name and version, and the cache is stored in either the API Gateway or the Key Manager server. There are a number of different types of caching used by API Manager. The API Gateway Cache, which caches keys at the gateway. The Resource Cache, which caches HTTP calls. The Key Manager Cache, which caches keys at the Key Manager. The Response Cache, which caches backend responses. And the API Store Cache, which caches the store content, for example, the last five APIs. Validation Information Caching at the API Gateway level When caching is enabled at the gateway and a request hits the gateway, it first populates the cache entry for a given token. If a cache entry does not exist in the cache, it calls the Key Manager server. This process is carried out using web service calls. Once the Key Manager server returns the validation information, it gets stored in the gateway. Because the API Gateway issues a web service call to the Key Manager server only if it does not have a cache entry, this method reduces the number of web service calls to the Key Manager server. As a result of this, it is faster than the alternative method. Validation Information Caching at the Key Manager level In this method, the cache is maintained at the Key Manager server rather than the API Gateway. As a result, for each and every API call that hits the API Gateway, the gateway issues a web service call to the Key Manager server. If the cache entry is available in the Key Manager server, it is returned to the gateway. If not, the database will be checked for the validity of the token. This method has a lower performance compared to the earlier one, but the advantage of this method over the other is that we do not have to store any security-related information at the gateway. By default, caching is enabled at the gateway as it is the faster method. We can have caching enabled at both the Gateway and Key Manager at the same time as well. The API Manager uses WSO2 ESB's Cache Mediator to cache response messages for each API. Caching improves performance because the backend server does not have to process the same data for a request multiple times. To offset the risk of obsolete data in the cache, you can set an appropriate timeout period. You can enable response caching when creating a new API or editing an existing one using the API Publisher UI. Go to the API Publisher and click the Add API menu to create a new API 
or the edit link associated with an existing API. Then, navigate to the Manage tab where you find the Response Caching section. You can set it to Enabled and give a timeout value. This enables the default response caching settings. Throttling allows you to limit the number of hits to an API during a given period of time. Every API has a set of built-in handlers that will be executed for each API request. Throttling is used typically in cases such as the following. To make an API, application, or a resource available to a consumer at different levels of service, usually for monetization purposes. Protecting APIs from common types of security attacks, including denial of service. Regulating traffic according to infrastructure availability. There are four different levels of throttling, API level, application level, resource level, and IP level. When the API level throttling is selected, the subscriber is granted a maximum number of requests to the API according to the tiers the subscriber selects. Application level throttling is defined at the time an application is created in the API store. An application is available to a consumer at different levels of service. For example, if you have infrastructure limitations in facilitating more than a certain number of requests to an application at a time, the throttling tiers can be set accordingly so that the application can have a maximum number of requests within a defined time. An API is made up of one or more resources. Each resource handles a particular type of request and is analogous to a method or function in a larger API. Resource level throttling tiers are set to HTTP verbs of an API's resources when managing APIs using the API Publisher portal. In IP-based throttling, you can limit the number of requests sent by a client IP. The final request limit granted to a given user on a given API is ultimately defined by the consolidated output of all throttling tiers together. Let's look at a scenario where throttling is used. Two users named Kim and Alex subscribe to an API using the Gold subscription, which allows 20 requests per minute. They will both use the App1 application for the subscription, which again has a throttling tier set to 20 requests per minute. All resource level throttling tiers are unlimited. In this scenario, although both users are eligible for access of 20 requests per minute to the API, each will practically have a limit of only 10 requests per minute. You can now work on the Add New Throttling Policy exercise on the LabKit. This concludes this lesson. Thank you.